this episode, I'm going to show you how to spray the bed area weeds that you have. And so we're going to get right to it. So on these types of weed situations where you've got border beds or th something like this, where you've got weeds, water grass, things like that coming up, my way of doing it is I use Killzall, which is, yes, glyphosate. If you don't want to use chemicals, then here's a nice alternative. You go in and you cut them out by root. It's called manual labor. <laughs> And so that'll take you all summer, so good luck with that. But not me. I'm going after it with the chemical. So what I'm going to do here is, now note, with glyphosate, you kill the green leaf you touch. When I go underneath my trees and around my flowers, no, I do not want that on their leaves. But I won't hurt them if I stay like this. Look, I'm only touching exactly what I want to kill. And again, same as last episode, I don't hold it in one spot. You do not, this is by contact. That's why they say whatever green leaf you touch, that's what you're going to work on. Look at that, cracks and crevices, boom. Now I'm going up here. This is where I've had my pansies growing. Look at that, got an elm sprout coming up. That could be a tree, but not anymore. Then I come over here, and I will have flowers back in here, so I'm not hurting the soil. I'm only focusing on getting rid of, now this little nasty critter here is spurge. This little round thing here, and that sucker seeds out. So once you get to a plant that's about this size here, and they start flowering, some plant like that, six inches in diameter, can probably put off about 3,000 seeds per plant. There's an aspen sprout, don't want that. I come in and I'm cleaning up everything. I mean, there's nothing that's going to survive this that I don't want to. Now, this is an artificial flower, it doesn't matter if I spray it or not. <laughs> And here's my other nice, beautiful little artificial flower. The thing about them is they don't take much care. It's pretty cool. All right. Now I'm back in around my roses and my beautiful flowering plants. So I'm really slowing down. I'm tightening my spray pattern. I'm making okay. sure very, very careful. Very, very careful. I don't want any drift. I don't want any splash. I just want direct 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 application now I've slowed down my movement now that is not a weed that is a rosemary plant I just planted so I have to be very gentle and careful around it so see we've almost gone around this whole sector mm -hmm. in that short period of time and then we'll finish up I just go I like to work in grids I like to work in sections to where I know I started here, I came back here, I've done it all. And that knocked out the whole perimeter of that yard, including the bed areas, under the roses, under the flowers, everything. Again, I keep my pressure high on my sprayer. It conserves your chemical and it makes your spraying more accurate. So don't ever let it dwindle on you. The reason why on this spurge you don't want this in your cracks and crevices is because I told you each one of these little plants puts off a couple of 3,000 seeds. Well, guess what lives those? Ants. Somebody probably asked, why are you doing this? And I'm going to tell them. Over here by my swimming pool pumps, naturally, I don't weed eat over here. So the only choice I've got is chemical control. Now see over here, I've got more freedom of range. So I just spray. I'm not worried about hurting anything. This is usually going to be somewhere around a 48 hour kill. 
in 48 hours, none of this will exist anymore. None of the weeds, nothing. It'll be total bare dirt, green, beautiful. Now I want to take us out into the alley, Mike, because I want to show you how to keep an alley clean with this stuff. Remember that weeds do attract ants. I'd like to make sure folks understand that. Now see, I had sprayed my alley two weeks ago, but after the rain, I got it coming back, you know, stuff happens. So I'm just, again, a hitting only the green stuff. Goat head, look at this, right here, Mike. That's a two week old goat head. So I've kept this pretty clean for my neighbor which I enjoy doing so that he doesn't have to think about it. Purslane, jeez. Stuff's everywhere. All right, so from here, notice the height. I ran out last time before I got to this part. Mm -hmm. So our height here is anywhere from 12 to 18 inches. This will be dead in 48 hours. That's how quick this is going to work. Four ounces per gallon of water this time of the year in the heat. With surfactant, well, it comes with surfactant, but me, I always add more surfactant. Now look at this baby. This is a classic example of what you don't want growing in your alley. Remember, the mosquitoes love it besides the ants. Okay, there's our little miniature Christmas tree. I got some decent ones going out here. <laughs> ah, the corgis, they love me. They don't like when I sing rock and roll at night either. Okay. Now this little nasty thing growing here is trumpet vine. They just had to have this whole fence up and down here replaced. You see one up there blooming. Right. These things actually break fences. So we've started spraying that. Some people plant them because they think they're pretty until you go ahead and live with them because they just take over. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, and I'm not doing it on this show because I've got to really donate some time. See all that tall grass down there? That's going to get hit with Roundup, but why can't I do it first? Because it's got to be mowed. So I'm going to have to take my professional weed eater over there and... We're gonna cut it down to about four inches tall and then I'm gonna spray it. All of this stuff, like I wanna comment on this for a second. This has all been treated like this for a period of, I will say, a decade, maybe a little longer. I do it, I keep up with it. Uh, but most of your good, most good homeowners do it. They understand the importance of weed control and that goes hand in hand with pest control. 